In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use linear inequalities in real-world situations to help us solve and uh, find some stuff out. So, let's go ahead and read the problem first of all. It says, tickets to a dance were $3 in advance or $5 at the door. In order to cover expenses, they need to collect at least $150 in admissions. Use X as the number of advance ticket sales and Y as the number of at-the-door ticket sales. Write and graph an inequality to show how many tickets must be sold in order to make a profit. Okay, well, first of all, we have X and Y. They tell us to use those, and we know that each advance ticket is going to bring in $3. So for the advance ticket sales, we're going to bring in 3X, and for the at the door ticket sales we're going to bring in five times y because there's y tickets being sold at the door each of those brings in five bucks x tickets at the in advance each of those brings in three bucks now the total of those two things we'll add those together we need to compare that to 150 okay so it says at least 150 so is 150 okay yeah, 150 is okay, so we know for sure we've got the equal to part of our inequality. Now, we've got to figure out what inequality symbol to use here, and sometimes there's a little bit of confusion, so let me give you a tip. Think of a number that's not this one that you know works. Well, if at, say, at least 150, if I bring in 200, that's good. That's what we want. And remember, this represents the amount of money that's coming in. So... We have 200, and we're going to compare that to 150. How does it compare? Well, 200 is greater than 150, so that's the symbol that I want to use. Okay? So grab something that you know works, and that can help you to make sure that you get the correct symbol for the inequality. All right, now i got to graph this, and in order to do that, a good option here would probably be to use the intercepts to graph. So let's go ahead and find those intercepts. Remember to do that we're going to put in zero for the opposite of the one that we're looking for. So if I put in zero for y to start with I have three times x and I'm going to say equals because I want that boundary line 150 divided by 3 divided by 3 we end up with x equals 50. Alright then we're going to put in 0 for x and solve for y. So our other intercept, 5y equals 150, and then divide by 5, divide by 5, we end up with y equals 30. All right, so we've got our x-intercept and our y-intercept. Now I have a grid here, and let's think about this for a second. Are there any values that don't make sense for either the x or the y? Well, hmm, negative stuff doesn't make sense, does it? Because we can't sell negative tickets. So what we're going to do is focus in on the first quadrant. So this is going to be 0 right here, and the other parts of our coordinate plane would be down here. But we're not interested in those because those values don't make sense for our problem. Now, we're going up to... 50 and 30 for sure. So let's go by 5's. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, like so. Okay, and this is the X, and remember X is the number of advanced ticket sales. So this is advanced sales. Okay, then we go over here, we'll label it in the same way. We'll go by fives with each mark there. I'll just label by tens. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and so on. Okay, so and this is the at the door sales. Alright, now it's just at the door. Okay, so let's graph our intercepts here. X equals 50. It's going to give us a point right there. And then Y equals 30. It's going to give us a point 
right there. Now, we have to remember, what type of a line should this be since we're graphing an inequality? Well, should be a solid line because it's got the equal to part. So we're going to go ahead and create a solid line here connecting our two intercepts, like so. Okay, then we need to figure out where to shade. Remember, with an inequality, there's always going to be a place that we need to shade in so that it shows the things that work in our inequality. Well, remember how we can do that? We can test a point, and right here we can test this point, 0, 0. If we plug in 0 for x and for y, then what happens? Well, this would be 3 times 0 is 0, 5 times 0 is 0, so that whole thing is 0. 0 is greater than or equal to 150. Well, that's not true. So 0, 0 is here. It doesn't work, and that means we need to shade out here. This is the area that works. Now, doesn't that make sense? If we sold 0 tickets, well, obviously we're not going to make $150. So everything that's in this shaded area represents a combination that would work in terms of ticket sales. Kind of cool to, to know that. So all those things we can figure out without even calculating anything more. We'll just be able to look at our graph. Okay, so let's take a look and continue on here with this second part. It says, if 30 tickets were sold in advance, what is the minimum number of tickets that must be sold at the door to make a profit? Okay, so 30 in advance. Let's take a look here. So here's 30 in advance, and what we need to do is find what gets us into that shaded region. Well, notice it looks like it's crossing right about there. That's 15. So 15 definitely is in our shaded region, but it looks like even less than that. Maybe 12 or 13, somewhere in that neighborhood. Well, let's see. We have 30 that were sold in advance, so that's going to be $90 coming in. And how much more do we need? Well, we need, let's just jot this down here. So if we put in 30 for the advance sales, so 3 times 30 plus 5 times y is greater than or equal to 150. And we can solve this. It would be 90 plus 5y is greater than or equal to 150. Subtract 90. Subtract 90. We end up with, I'm running out of space here. Let's go up here. 5y is greater than or equal to, that would be 60, divide by 5 and we end up with y is greater than or equal to 12. Hey, just like we thought, right about at 12. So we need to sell at least 12 tickets at the door in order to make a profit. Now, I did that. See all the work that I had to do here to figure that out? My graph told me that without even doing all that calculation. So that's where these graphs are really handy, and especially if you create it using technology. This one is a little bit uh, by hand. We, we don't necessarily have the accuracy that we might like, but we knew pretty darn well that 12, it was close to that, and we figured it out by hand to see, sure enough, that's what we want. Now, we could also use this graph to figure out any combination, like if we knew that we sold 20 um, 20 at, in advance and 50 at the door, what does that do? Does that get us enough? Do we gonna get enough profit? Well, let's check. 20 in advance and 50 at the door? Sure enough, we, we know that based on our graph that that's gonna get us what we want. You could also say, well, how about 10 at the door? If we sold 10 at the door and 40, um, excuse me, 10 at the door would put us here and then we'd need to sell at least like 40, 35, 40 in advance and any of those amounts out here we'd be able to see that again without even calculating anything just making use of our graph. Pictures worth a thousand words so sometimes people don't like graphing but ooh, it's kinda handy. If we create a nice accurate graph we don't have to calculate anything further. Alright so real-world linear inequalities 
uh, they're kind of handy because it allows us to look at different situations and we see all the different ordered pairs represented by the shaded region that would work in our given situation. So in this case we had these ticket sales. Um, I hope this video was helpful and don't worry so much about the graphing. It can be kind of handy. Alright. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.